So now in this video, I have a uh, module here. That's a 555 timer. Uh, it's a 555 timer module, uh, but that's the uh, 555 timer integrated surf circuit. It's a surface mount, um, which means they solder it directly to uh, the front there. There's not uh, pins that go through. When it comes to the 555, other things have pins that go through. It's uh, mounted to the surface right there. Um, this was uh, less than $2. I got five of them. And after taxes, I believe it was eight twenty. Um, so I think they're probably not a, a bad way to go if you want to add five 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 timers to a larger a circuit without having to do any soldering or anything. They have these uh, female to male, so uh, there's uh, pins right there, three pins, and uh, this little jumper. These are separate. I had them in a different kit. Um, but uh, yeah, that's female slides onto the pin there and then the male end I'll unplug this there we go that uh, can plug into a breadboard or uh, something else right there and the uh, timing here is what it uh, was coming out of the bag I haven't adjusted this yet I wanted to uh, make sure to show that we uh, can adjust the frequency with the uh, trimmer potentiometers there but uh, we got you know the slowest range I'm assuming right here Again, I just took it out, haven't adjusted anything. So if I move that uh, jumper, um, the uh, timing should uh, go faster, I would believe. And then we could fine tune it a little bit faster, a little bit slower. One of these uh, trim pots is for how long the output's high. And then the other one is for how long the output is low. And it looks like it's probably about one hertz right here. So the LED turns on and then turns off about once a second, it looks like and so we can adjust um, I don't know which one is which but we can adjust the timing for how long it is high versus how long it is low if it is on you know perfectly right now as long it is off so on for half a second off for half a second perfectly that would be a 50 percent duty cycle if it was on for about 75 percent of a second output high I should say LED on and uh, then off 25%, that would be a 75% duty cycle. Whereas if the LED here was on 25% of the time and then off 75% of a second, it would be a 25% duty cycle. And now I have my uh, pocket oscilloscope there. It's ready to uh, start measuring voltages. These are the uh, probes right there. So um, we're going to clip them to jumpers in a little bit. And I just gave a false signal. I can give a false signal with uh, my finger right there. It's uh, measuring voltage changes with my finger. So I got another uh, male to female DuPont uh, connector. And I do have a kit where you can put these together. I don't have a lot of wire for it though. Um, but uh, basic electronic kits, a lot of them have these uh, female to male and also uh, male to male jumpers and stuff maybe even uh, female to female if you really look so I'm just gonna tack this anywhere to the uh, breadboard and then I have the uh, red and the blue jumpers here so for uh, measuring the uh, black we have uh, are gonna be our ground measurement right there and it's gonna measure the voltage difference so I'm gonna take the uh, alligator clip from the probe there and uh, clip it to this red one so I'm gonna put that into the same jumper there or into the same row as our uh, signal coming out of the 555 timer and uh, it does say uh, VCC where the red one is plugged in there so the bottom and then ground and uh, I'm not sure what it says where the uh, blue one or the uh, green one is okay so I uh, wasn't filming I uh, got a closer look it says out where I'm plugging the green one on the top there so it'd be hard to get that uh, to show up on uh, camera as you can see there it's kind of small um, but yeah there you can see VCC ground and out is kind of hidden by the capacitor it's kind of hard to see in person but I was able to read out in person and now we're gonna do something that I rarely do if I hold down the OK button unfortunately it pauses so this is why I set this up before um, I started measuring and I think it still has some recorded information what you see there that, that green bar there and unfortunately it starts in the middle when you first get these at least I did when I bought them uh, but that green bar is what we see on the screen it's also recording data as you go farther along so um, 
I think that's uh, picking up stray signals there. But uh, ultimately, it takes a period of time before you get fully updated on uh, the uh, data when it comes to uh, mostly the uh, duty cycle. So there we go. We got the uh, positive going to that red jumper there, as we mentioned before. And after I clip them, um, I can tack that uh, into the board. And now we'll come over, and there you can see uh, the uh, frequency there. So it does look like it is high longer than it is low right there. And again, we got, you know, kind of flat line down there. Um, so it's going to take a little while to catch up. Um, you can see that the number is going up because, as I said before, what you see on the screen is not all that it's calculating. So it's going to take a while before it uh, fills up all that space. But uh, in any case, it does look like, uh, you know, one hertz. So, um, you know, that's uh, right when you jump up and then go back down and then right before you jump back again. That means it's about one second during that uh, period of time. So I don't make a lot of videos about uh, uh, frequency and stuff, so I won't have the best explanation. But yeah, it looks like we probably got about a 66% duty cycle approximately, meaning 66% uh, of the time it's high versus, uh, what would that be, like 30.3% uh, uh, it looks like, it is low. So duty cycle is how long it is high, percentage wise, versus low. So now to get our measurements uh, quicker, I'm going to go to the seconds per division and uh, lower this number, which will uh, speed things up. And um, so there you can see the, the waveform is wider, it's easier to see. And also, we're going to fill up that space in uh, no time right there. But uh, the numbers there are going to stay the same. So I'm going to assume this one is uh, the amount of time that the output is low. So I'm going to turn this trim pot uh, counterclockwise. And actually, the duty cycle is going up uh, right now, it looks like. So again... Um, it's kind of filling in the uh, gaps there. These are multi-turn trim pots. I believe you can turn it 30 times to go from its maximum to its uh, minimum right there. So I'm going, uh, sometimes it's like 69. Yeah, we broke like 70. So I think that is uh, making the uh, duty cycle higher that uh, it's taking longer. So now I'm gonna go clockwise and uh, a bunch of times. And hopefully we can get uh, about a 50% duty cycle. So we're not getting that. Um, let's try uh, the other one here. So I'm going to the uh, lower one. So I'm going to go clockwise. See if we get more closer to 50. I think that's uh, getting higher. So, so yeah, adjusting this uh, isn't going to be as easy as I thought. So yeah, the uh, frequency is going up. It's getting twice as fast uh, right there. So um, if we're going to try to get back to one hertz, we, we're going to have to kind of fiddle with those for a while. So I kept adjusting them, go up on one, go down a little with the other one or something when the frequency is about right until we got, you know, somewhere it looks like about 50% uh, uh, duty cycle. Now I'm going to slow things down and um, yeah, I think we're kind of close there. Again, we could fine tune it a little bit more, wait for this to fill up, see how close we are to uh, one uh, hertz right there. But um, yeah, if you need to go a uh, faster frequency, I believe it's a little bit clockwise on uh, both of them. If that's kind of your main goal, to get a little bit higher uh, frequency and uh, just keep doing that, get the frequency up. And then at some point, uh, you know, when it comes to duty cycle, I can't find that slot. Oh, there you go. Wrong angle, so the light, the way the light was hitting, I couldn't see the slot. Um, so yeah, we could turn both these clockwise, I believe, um, to get the uh, frequency to go up without the duty cycle changing a whole lot. And then at some point, you can kind of go up like a little bit with one, and uh, like clockwise with one, counterclockwise with the other one, to kind of adjust the uh, duty cycle without changing the frequency a lot. So um, we're just going to kind of... And uh, that right there, I think I'm uh, close to what I want right now. And now we're going to make our uh, larger adjustment. So we got uh, that little uh, jumper there, going to slide it off. And uh, so we just bridge the gap between the uh, two pins. And I did uh, test this out and um, move in here. Now I believe that uh, the frequency 
goes up about uh, 10 times, I believe. Yeah, I think we're at about uh, 12 hertz right there. And um, so yeah, this is going faster. You know, we could uh, set this display so we could see the waveform, but the waveform is going to be the same. It's just going to be faster. And um, it is pretty hard to uh, get into there. And um, so I got those pliers there. Smaller pliers, the uh, better. So the uh, jumper there, um, this jumper did come with the uh, module there. It was already on the module. And uh, yeah, looks like we are at 100 hertz right there approximately. So again, we can fine tune things with that. And uh, you know, this isn't the best oscilloscope for doing this, um, but uh, they aren't that expensive. And I'm trying not to short anything. You know, might want to turn the power off before you do this. Um, remove power from the module, maybe. Uh, there we go. And let's see how fast uh, we are going. So yeah, it looks like uh, only like 80 hertz right now. I thought it would go up, so um, there you go, 100 hertz, so in that range. I thought it'd be higher, um, but again, this is a new module for me, so um, you know, um, hopefully I didn't damage anything. So I not, now I found the uh, problem, and uh, that's uh, the time that we have there. So I'm um, gonna hit this again. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make that a, a faster, uh, frequency so we're just kind of getting a quick snapshot of the uh, waveform right there every uh, once in a while and uh, we're in the nanoseconds there we go microsecond now you can finally see the uh, waveform right there and uh, this is um, as fast as I can set this uh, but in any case yeah it looks like uh, it's definitely in the kilohertz range maybe it's like 80 uh, kilohertz so uh, much better results there I moved the uh, jumper down one spot and uh, here you can see that uh, looks like probably about 880 Hertz right there so the output is going high and low about uh, 880 times and uh, you know close to 50% that does look a little bit smaller so that's probably like 55% high and then 45% uh, low and um, so I believe if I want to make it a little more close to 50-50, turn this one down right there. And but yeah, you can see the waveform changing a little bit. We're getting to 54. So yeah, looks like counterclockwise for this one, we'll get it uh, closer to 50% duty right there. We are uh, slowing down the frequency though. And uh, so we could go clockwise with this one, the opposite direction. That'll bring the frequency back up and still get the uh, duty cycle closer to 50. There we go. So yeah, we can keep bouncing back and forth. Um, but in any case, this is a really long video. I didn't really prepare. I just pulled this out of the bag and uh, came up with everything uh, you see here, basically on the spot. Um, but uh, uh, even though it um, wasn't a great video, that's actually kind of a good way to give you uh, video ideas for the future. Um, I can watch this video later on after I upload it and uh, come up with other ideas that'll make for uh, more interesting videos. So um, hopefully you still enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.